Today, I'm going to share with you three common pitfalls that a candidate can have during ICE charter professional reviews. Now, let's set the scene here. I'm not talking about other types of reviews. For example, there is something called technician professional reviews. I'm not talking about those. There is something called charter professional review progressive. I'm not talking about those. I'm just talking about this particular type of professional review called CPR, chartered professional review. And then the second point is, Potentially, this video can apply to all engineers and project managers from different regions. But this video, I want to dedicate this to Hong Kong engineers, especially Hong Kong junior engineers and potentially graduate engineers who will get through charter professional review very soon. The reason being, one day when I was talking with some other reviewers in this country, in UK, and uh, for some reason, I was the only Hong Kong person in that room. And then for some reason, we shared some common stories about candidates. One thing is about Hong Kong candidates. Now, Hong Kong candidates, they share similar values, which is good, which is good. They share similar PowerPoints. They share, share similar presentation style. Similar bullet points, similar grammar mistakes, similar stories, similar projects, similar weaknesses. So what is going on in here? So that night I was a little bit embarrassed because I was the only Hong Kong person in there and then people smiled at me. So that is the reason why I have this passion to come to this table, put up a camera, and let you guys know from Hong Kong, what are the common pitfalls that we can do better, we can avoid in ICE, ICE Charter Professional Review. Definitely, we can do better. So let's get right to the meat of the subject. Point one, point one, not demonstrating responsibilities. Now, I need to clarify this. We were told time and again that we, the engineers, need to be a good salesman. We, the engineers, need to present well, which is okay, which is not, which is, which is, which is not bad. But we were also told a good presenter is a good storyteller, which is okay too. But we need to remind ourselves that we are going through a professional review, my friend. So we are not there to get a charter professional storyteller qualification. We are going there to get a charter professional engineer qualification. And therefore, it is not enough. It is not enough to just tell a story. Otherwise, we are just a storyteller. We are just a writer. We can write story books. But we need to focus ourselves on presenting those attributes that we want to demonstrate to the examiner. For example, how do you apply the technical knowledge on site or in your office design works? How do you manage? And by the way, do you understand the differences between leadership and management? Do you understand sustainable development? Do you understand your contract? What type of contract? One day a candidate didn't even, couldn't even mention what type of contract his construction project is using. And that is a big problem. It shows the incompetency and that is a strict fail. So remember this, remember this. The other thing is, under this heading, is, you know, there are two examiners. And those examiners, despite all the rumors in Hong Kong, the two examiners are on equal standing. Equal standing, meaning if one examiner wants to fail you, they, of course, will discuss and come to an agreement. But if either of the examiner wants to fail you, that will be a fail. And therefore, you need to, within your short period of time of presentation, potentially five to 10 minutes, sometimes they allow a little longer, but probably just 10 minutes, to present yourself efficiently and clearly that you have demonstrated those seven att attributes required by ICE. Now, in the past, they were, they were nine. Now, there, there, there are only seven. In my opinion, they are, they are quite similar, similar principles, similar technical knowledge. They just rub different things differently. But you need to tell the examiner very clearly. It's more than storytelling. You may as well want to structure your story. If you want to be a storyteller, structure your story in order to deliver that message that I have achieved this, 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 and that attribute. You can do it. So that's point number one. Point number one. 
Do not only tell a story. Demonstrate your responsibility. Point number two. Point number two. I practice a particularly for Hong Kong engineers. Remember this: sustainable development is more than environmental protection, my friend. So, sustainable development is something is something about sustainability. So, what is sustainability? Do you understand there are different sustainability sustainable development goals in United Nations? So you need to go into those international issues to have a look. There are seventeen goals in what we call United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. For example, improving poverty. For example, improving inequality. And then you will say you will you will ask a question, say saying, "Oh, why do I need to care those? You need to care those. Why? Because when we talk about sustainable development, it is not about the sustainable development of just your project. We are talking about How your project can improve the sustainability of our community, for example, Hong Kong. Can your can your project improve the poverty in Hong Kong, for example? Can your project improve the inequality issues in Hong Kong, for example? If yes, that's brilliant. Then you need to demonstrate your understanding and your role in there. Is more than environmental protection. Is more than identifying valuable trees, old and valuable trees. Is more, more, more than protecting the environment by uh, by insulating noises from the residents. So that is important. Understand sustainable development. It is a concept which includes social impact. Which include many other factors other than or on top of environmental protection. Now, I'm not talking about. I'm not saying environmental protection by itself is not important. You need to demonstrate those, but it is more than that. Have a look at UN Sustainable Development Goals. There are seventeen goals in there. Do you know the current climate change issues? Do you know we have regular conferences? Talking about climate change, do you know the reactions of people on those conferences? They are all they are not all positive. Many people are pretty negative on those conferences. Why? And as an engineer, can you respond? Uh, how will you respond if, if if one person or one individual come to your project site and criticize on sustainability? How will we respond? So. That is the type of mindset that we need to have. We understand Hong Kong engineers are good, but we also need to understand Hong Kong is a dot. Hong Kong is a dot smaller than London, smaller than even London, and therefore you need to look outside, not a box, outside the dot to the international environment, and apply your knowledge from that perspective. And from there, we say, ah, this candidate is good. This candidate is competent. So that's point two. Now this is a、uh, this is not live stream, but this is recorded. I need to calm myself down. Okay, so okay, so third point, third point here, not knowing your contract. So this is important. We understand. So let's 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 be honest to ourselves. In Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, we understand once we have got that chartership, you got pay rise. Oh wow, wow, wow! Of course, you go as early as possible. We understand. So let's be honest with each other. This is reality in Hong Kong, and that is why we realize people from Hong Kong they tend to be young, in, including myself. Back then, well, I was there like in my twenties. Now I'm in my forties now, but twenty years ago I was there. I was the youngest one in there, and therefore, and therefore, people when they looked at us, they will, they, they will, they will have some hesitation on our experience, on our responsibility. Now, if you do not have that kind of responsibilities, do not go. Not only will you fail, you are also hurting the Hong Kong brand in there. So that is important, and that is why this commercial element is and is is the weakest area of Hong Kong engineers. Time and again, if you do not have that experience, by all means, go to your boss to ask for those type of responsibilities. Until you get those type of responsibilities, do not go ahead. You cannot study things out, my friend. Ah, so this is not a university course. This is a professional review. So therefore, if you remember or memorize all those textbook stuff, your university notes, it doesn't work. 
because we the reviewers understand how the outside world is playing the game that the games so we understand what are in the test books what are not in the test books <laughs> so remember this one but if you do not even have the basic knowledge there is no there is there is nothing bad to go to textbooks to study those fundamental principles for example ah, different main options this allocation of nec for example but it doesn't mean you don't need to need experience for example say for example a few days ago in hong kong heavy rainfall heavy rainfall then um will you invoke clause 60.1 bracket 19 so what is this do you understand prevention and what is this do you give verbal instructions right away in NEC, do you understand there is no verbal instruction? But what if practically you really, you really need a verbal, need a verbal instruction? Then what do you do? Things like that, practical, practical, realistic things that you need to demonstrate your competency, your decision. Sometimes a decision can be, can, can be something in, in a gray area. There is no black, black or white answer. But as long as you can demonstrate your competency and confidence and you have that kind of logic, that will be fine. So there's a third point. Let me put a one more thing here. One more thing is suddenly pops up in my mind. Now, many of the Hong Kong candidates, for some reason, they think they are clever putting in some sort of question plobbers in their project reports. So what are question problems? Question problems are, are areas you tend to hide away intentionally in order to tempt the examiner to ask a certain type of questions. And then you prepare that question beforehand. And then when they ask that type of question, oh, then, oh, bingo, I can, I can answer that right away because I prepared to answer. But guess what? We, the examiner, we, the reviewers, know what you are doing. Uh, we have gone through different many different reviews over the years we know what you are trying to do we will sense very accurately pretty accurately that this candidate is trying to hide away from a certain issues in order for us to ask a certain type of questions now some examiners do not like it if they do not like it the more question proper that you put, that you put in the less questions that you want will be asked and you will get into trouble so my, my advice here is, at the end of the day, we are there to be an accountable engineer and therefore be honest, be honest, open yourself up, show us how much qualities do you have? What are the competency areas do you have? And then uh, do not hide away things. Just be open, tell us your experience, tell us your roles, and that should work. Instead of trying to guess what type of questions that the examiner will ask by hiding something. This trick is a very old-fashioned trick already, my friend. So do not use it. Do not use it because we are all familiar with it. Before you even use it, we have witnessed that trick for so many times. So it doesn't work. Remember, questions propers do not work. Do not use this trick. Be open and that is the way that is the key to get a pass. Now, I have a lot more to say. And that is why in the coming days, in the coming days, so the first one will be in, I think, in the 20th of October. Uh, I will try to organize just an hour, just an hour of webinar, not just for Hong Kong, but mainly for Hong Kong, mainly for Hong Kong. If you look at the time, uh, is at night uh, on a certain day, I need to check. So it's 20th of October. It's just an hour, maximum two hours for us to share with you some of the details that I have talked about in this video. And I understand it's a charge. It's not that I want to make a profit out of you. <laughs> not so. Uh, it's just, there is just too much work in there, too much research going on in there. So we need to cover our admin costs at least. So I hope you understand. Uh, later on, depending on the response, depending on the response, um, there will be a one day workshop here in England, allowing Hong Kong people and also UK candidates to join us in this one day workshop before the exam or shortly before the exam in order to prepare their interview. 
There will be ongoing support too. For example, uh, on your report white writing, we also have a business partner here who is a local Briton, very experienced, very experienced in Hong Kong and UK. And he is a local Briton who can help you with your presentation skills and writing skills, especially English. So it's coming. Now it's just 10 pounds. 10 pounds is, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, how much does it, does it cost nowadays uh, for one cup of coffee? Coffee, probably three, three pounds, four pounds in Hong Kong dollars, $30, $40. So it's totally worth it. If you have one less cup of three, uh, a few less cup of coffee, you probably can, can join us. And let me tell you, let me reassure you, this work, this workshop is some sort of dedication for me and another business partner in UK to help those engineers who are trying to get through the challenge of this coming ICE. CPR. So I hope you like it. I hope you will join us. Uh, I will include the link. I will include the link in the comment section. I have also posted uh, the link on LinkedIn. So have a look and I hope to see many of you very soon online. Thank you very much.